The growing gap between rich and poor is no longer debatable, but what's causing it, and what can or should be done about it, is an ongoing discussion at every level of society. George Packer, a staff writer for The New Yorker and longtime reporter, took a unique approach to uncovering the country's economic story in his new book, The Unwinding, An Inner History of New America, which recently made the long list for this year's National Book Award. George, welcome. Thank you. It's a real pleasure to talk to you. It's great to see you. Now, uh, George, what do you mean by unwinding? I mean the end of a deal that used to exist um, among Americans that basically said if you hold down a job, if you educate your kids, there's a place for you in society, there's a secure economic place, there's a better future for your children, uh, and you're sort of recognized as part of a, of a fabric. And I think in the last generation, that deal has, has come undone. And now we're more and more left to our own devices and more Americans are left behind. There's an enormous opening up of inequality all over the country, um, which we also see here in New York, but between those who are making it and those who are not. And there's less of a, a kind of glue to continue to hold us together. And institutions that used to work on behalf of, of the broad middle class, such as schools and the media and government agencies and corporations no longer do. And so we become a kind of fragmented um, and atomized society. And that deal that I think was in place for about half a century no, lo no longer holds. So that's what I mean by the unwinding. Now, is this unwinding unprecedented in this country? I think there's always been dissolutions and then remakings of the national fabric. The Civil War you know, is an obvious example, the end of slavery, and then uh, the New Deal, which came in place of, you know, after the, the crash of 29 and, and in, in the middle of the Great Depression. So this is constant unmaking and remaking of America that, 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 that sees us sort of disintegrating and then being pulled back together by new structures, laws, uh, social norms. Um, so it's not unprecedented, but this one feels to me like something very long term where big events like 9-11 or the election of Barack Obama or the financial crisis and the Great Recession that used to propel new solutions no longer do. We've seen the same erosion of these institutions and the same failure of leaders who run them uh, in spite of these historic events over the last decade. So it seems as if the rot has, has set in pretty deep, and there's no longer uh, the tools for self-correction. Now, you, you chose to tell this story as a narrative rather than a straight-up political analysis. Yeah. How come? We have those books. There's some very good ones, you know, and I learned a lot from reading them. But I didn't want to write one more policy prescription book. I didn't think I had much to add to that conversation. We sort of know what the problem is, and we even know what some of the solutions are. Or if we disagree about that, then whatever I say is going to go in one ear and out the other. I wanted to get deeper into the almost the nervous system of the country, to create a portrait of the past generation in America through the stories of a handful of Americans from around the country, from different walks of life, different uh, levels of society in order to get to something closer to the soul and, and to the, the deeper feelings of living in this period of an unwinding rather than simply to have it pass through the brain and through the, the political reflexes. It's a political book, but it's really a book yeah. about people and about how they yeah. have been undermined and have tried to react and, and remake themselves in the middle of all this upheaval. Now, you mentioned the mayoral campaign, and I think I see echoes, or hear echoes, uh, of this unwinding uh, during this campaign. Do you? Well, Bill de Blasio has talked about um, the two cities and about inequality, and he's come up with some policy proposals to try to mitigate its effects. It's just there around us all the time. Uh, inequality is, I've called it this, in, this invisible gas mm. that, that you, know, you can sort of sense, you can maybe smell it, but you don't know what the source is or you don't know how to shut it off. But it's there everywhere in housing prices, in the complexion of neighborhoods, in you know, who can live where, in public schools versus private schools, in public schools versus other public schools. We are becoming more and more polarized by wealth. Mm. And, um, it's, you know, th there are a thousand reasons and then there are a thousand solutions, but it's a bit like global warming. It's there all the time, and yet it's so vast that we seem unable to, to actually 
begin to slow it down and reverse it. But I think it is reversible if, uh, if we want to. And I, I guess a, a test of that will be if or when de Blasio becomes mayor, whether, whether he can. Well, George, thank you so much. It's my pleasure.